Oh boy, this is gonna be exciting. So let's get God's help right away. Precious Heavenly Father, we ask you for your help. Lord, we know that you have Holy Spirit on assignment, breathing on the Word of God as we meditate on it. Lord, open up our heart that we might receive your Word and that it would bring forth lasting fruit. Lord, that it would bring forth life in our lives. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Say it out loud, amen, yes. God's gonna do something great in your life, I believe it, because you've chosen to seek first the kingdom of God and all of his ways, his righteousness. Jesus made a plan for us, and we are getting into part two of relationships. Part two of relationships. And in this segment, I'm gonna dial in a specifically on choose your destiny with each relationship. Choose your destiny with each relationship. You might be thinking, well, what's in it for me, Stephen? Come on, what's in it for me? Well, that's a great question and I'm so glad you're asking it. That's what you should be asking. In part one of this series, we learned that there are laws of relationship. Just like gravity is a law with very predictable outcomes, there are laws of relationship with very predictable outcomes. Jesus gave us the principle or foundational law, which is our vertical connection with God. We love God. That's what Jesus said. It all starts there. You can plan to build a 40-story tower, but we all understand that you need a base, a foundation for it all to sit on. Then Jesus gave us the second law of relationship, and it was that age-old golden rule, do unto others as you'd have them do to you, or love your neighbor as yourself. We talked a little seed time and harvest because we found out that the law of multiplication is built into all relationships for good or bad. You can multiply your sorrow or multiply your joy. It all depends on how intentional we are with our relationships, right? Because we learned that every single relationship is taking us up or down, forward or backward, over or under. And it only takes one wrong connection to sink your ship. It's exciting and foreboding all at the same time. I think probably one of the most shocking revelations some of us learned was this, your seed can never improve the ground, it only proves the ground. Some of us thought that we could just keep sacrificing, giving and giving and investing into ground of pride and foolishness, and that at some point a wonderful, miraculous miracle would take place and a harvest would manifest. Well, that's anti-Bible, that's anti-truth. So in answer to the big question, what's in it for me? Suddenly turn around peace, joy, new, better relationships, prosperity, open doors, good night's sleep, better health, sanity, love. You see, it's not that you don't love right now, but you're not getting a return or a harvest because you're not chosen. You haven't chosen the right ground, the proper ground for your seed. You're tied to a ship that's going down. It's sinking. So part two is decide your destiny with each relationship. As we talk about healthy relationships, it must be understood that we must be healed and made whole ourselves. To be in right re friendships or relationships, you must be made right yourself. God is reaching out to you this very second. You can't get any more right than the source of all life and love and God Almighty loves you. In His Son, Jesus, He can make you right, make you whole, make you healed. The reality we all need to understand about true relationships is the why. We learned in part one that right relationships have the power to multiply what's good, just like wrong relationships multiply what's bad. It's easy to conclude from that that there is a time to be alone. It's better to walk alone than with the wrong person, with a fool, or with an evil influence. Some anonymous person once said, you cannot be lonely if you like the person you're alone with. 
Well, remember, multiplication was built into relationships from the very beginning of time. Genesis 1 verse 28, God said, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. That was the blessing. It was a blessing on humanity. But the blessing becomes a curse when you walk without God's order, without his principles, without his laws of understanding. Loneliness multiplies when you're walking with the wrong people. Let me remind you of what's in it for you, my friend. Because in talking about relationships, we are talking about right relationships for you. Relationships decide your destiny and therefore relationships affect your health for good or for bad. Relationships can determine your wealth for rich or for poor. Relationships directly decide your peace or your stress level, your joy or your pain level. Your future can accurately be predicted just by looking at your relationships, what you tolerate. You decide your destiny when you choose a relationship. Not God, you. Get that in your heart because you may be blaming God for a choice that you made. Stop, drop, roll. And by that I mean repent. God does have his best interests for you, but you have got to get with his plan and choose. Let me tell you this story. One day a housekeeper was cleaning and she heard the canary singing away and it reminded her that it was time to clean the birdcage. Well, she decided that it would be easiest to use her vacuum cleaner. Disregarding the frantic bird, she stuck the vacuum wand in the cage and everything was going fine until the doorbell rang. Well, startled, she raised the wand when she turned and the nervous canary was sucked into the vacuum cleaner. Well, expecting the worst, the housekeeper quickly shut off the cleaner. She opened it up and she retrieved the bird alive. To her relief, the precious little guy seemed to be okay. He was stunned, but otherwise appeared none the worse for the experience. Put back on his perch, though, something changed. He sat there, songless. Too often, that's what happens in relationships. You get sucked in. The pressure is turned up. You don't understand what just happened. And then your song is gone. It's lost, stolen. As you swing back and forth, going nowhere in life, songless. Is that someone that maybe you know? Maybe that's you. Is it? The good news today is God's plan is for you to get your song back and to have the right relationships, to be set free from the trauma of the bad ones. Great relationships that go somewhere good. So let's talk about your relationships. Oh, Jesus, take the wheel, right? Every relationship in your life is like a button on an elevator. It's taking you up or taking you down, everyone. There's no static relationships. They're all taking you up or taking you down. There is no such thing as a neutral relationship, up or down, forward or backward. It's time for you to dare to challenge popular thinking, not just in the world, but popular thinking that might even sneak into the life of Christianity, into other Christians, your life. It was once very common thinking that it was impossible to go to the moon, impossible. In the area of relationships, common popular thinking is full of Bad ideas. We don't have to look too far to see that. John C. Maxwell, famous author and leadership um, consultant, once said this, think about what's best, not what's popular. That's what you need to do for relationships. Think about what's best, not what's popular. Many feel helpless about their family, their friendships. God has great help for you in this area, and he knows what we need to understand to walk in it. So let's go deeper in God's way of thinking right now. Real relationships or wheel relationships. <laughs> I know that sounds funny, but wheel relationships. All relationships are real. Some are real good, some are real bad, and others are real dangerous. Some are real ugly. All relationships are real, but the best are wheel 
wheel relationships. Yes, I said that round wheel. You know, the round thing on your car or on your bike. So what do wheels do? They turn. They reduce friction. Only a small part of the wheel touches the ground at a time. The rest of the wheels at rest or in revolution to its next season of interaction. When it's working properly, it goes round and around, making the load lighter, the trip smoother, faster, more pleasant, and the destination more sure. Right? You get that. Wheel relationships behave the same way. They add synergy and they multiply strength. The genius of a wheel is exposed when it's in motion. Stationary, there's little difference between a wheel and a block. Movement is critical to discerning good wheels in your life. A relationship can profess to be an ally to forward motion, but movement, adaptability, flexibility, they're the real proof. Do you have a heavy load? Well, you need wheels. You need wheel relationships. Now, wheels aren't all you need, but they're a huge part of what you need. How to move the unmovable, the heavy, the ultra-challenging? How do you make what's otherwise an impossible burden light and easy? What is it you desperately need in your relationship quotient? Wheel relationships. What do you need to repair or give attention to? Wheels that are stuck. You don't need more energy or more fuel in the tank. You need to get those flat tires either repaired or replaced now. What you need to pray for, search out, and get into your life immediately is wheel wisdom for wheel relationships. I think you're getting this, right? Imagine trying to pedal your bike with one wheel pumped up and working perfectly, but the other tire is flat as a pancake. Do you criticize the bike for not working? Stupid bike. Do you criticize yourself for not being strong enough to push through? Maybe the path itself, blame it because it's just, it's got too many ups and downs and it's just too difficult, too many challenges. Of course not. That's what makes the bike trip exciting, fun, and a worthy adventure. And yet many, many people have gone through life blaming the path, blaming the vehicle, their lack of energy, their lack of strength. And the truth is, wisdom is what's lacking. They have a wheel relationship problem. It only takes one wheel malfunctioning on a bike to stop it. One flat wheel on a car forces it to pull over. One wheel blown on an 18-wheel truck will impede the journey, endanger the load, and stop the truck. Every relationship in your life takes you someplace. Everyone. Jesus chose every one of his disciples, and his choice of Judas provided him just enough betrayal to take him to the cross. Did you ever think of that? Otherwise, the devil had no way to crucify Jesus. Jesus had to actually help him. Every relationship is taking you someplace good or someplace bad. Everyone, you always need to be equipped for the good trip of a right relationship. Jesus suffered betrayal so that he could save us from the pain of betrayal. He suffered all the relationship poison for us. Accusations, lies, rumors, rejection, criticism, doubt, negativity, scorn, mocking, you name it, and Jesus suffered all the relationship poison for you and me. Therefore, you are not called to pursue the relationship roller coaster monster ride. He did it for you to free you from the codependent pull of such a destructive orbit. Like I said, every relationship is taking you someplace. And God has already ordained a good plan and a good path for you. In short, that's why there's some people Jesus tells you to walk with and others he says, don't even sit on the couch with them. Let's take a look at how the Bible directs us to choose our right relationships. One of the first chapters in the Bible my mom had ever um, in, directed me to and told me to memorize was Psalm 1. Look at how it starts. Psalm 1, verse 1. Listen to this. Blessed, happy, fortunate, prosperous, and enviable is the man who walks and lives not in the counsel of the ungodly, following their advice, their plans and purposes, nor stands submissive and inactive in the path where sinners walk, nor sits down to relax and rest where the scornful and the mockers gather. Now that just blew apart a lot of evangelicals um, missionary strategy 
God says, don't do that. The whole book of Psalms starts out with counseling us how to be blessed by intentionally not walking with the wrong people. Wrong people make for wrong agreements, wrong decisions, flat tires. Like we already said, better to walk alone than with a fool. Amos 3 verse 3, can two walk together unless they be agreed? Other translations say, except they be agreed. If one tire is flat on a bike and the other is full, what's the outcome? Success or failure? We have adapted a strange cultural belief in some Christian circles that syncs up with the ideology of fairy tales. Can a kiss from a princess really turn a frog into a king? I mean, think about it. You know, the childhood fairy tales where the princess has the power to break the spell on a king who has been turned into a frog, the curse, he's been turned into a frog. We've bought into this ideology or this philosophy that, oh, I can break the spell of badness with my sweetness and my goodness. Can you? Is that really Bible truth? In other words, holiness or goodness or righteousness is somehow viral. Like you can catch it. God is so good that his goodness is contagious. You can catch it like a flu bug. Is that true? Is that biblical? Of course not. The Bible is full of relational laws that decide the outcome. I want you to consider this. In Mark chapter 6, Jesus is not accepted by his own people. And so the Bible says he could do no great works among them. He was limited. He could do very little among them. Apparently, Jesus' goodness was not a contagion. You, you must believe on the Lord Jesus to be saved, to be set free. The Bible says you must know the truth to be set free by the truth. Without faith, the Bible says in Hebrews eleven six, it's impossible to please God. But there's, there's our frog theology. Hmm. Choose your destiny with each relationship. It's like frog theology is like this. If, if only bad Johnny could just hang out with good little Mary, then at some point bad Johnny will just morph into good Johnny. Oh, and if they get married, it's even better, right? How many troubled and painful marriages were born out of that, that wrong, stupid thinking? And Haggai, God is giving the priests a back to the basics talk. Now listen to God talking to the priests, people that were supposed to know about relationships. He's talking to them and he gives them this instruction. Haggai chapter two, verses 12 and 13. He says, if one carries in the skirt of his garment flesh that is holy and with his skirt or the flaps of his garment, he touches bread or wine or oil or any kind of food, does what he touch become holy? And the priests answer, no. Holiness is not infectious. Well, then he goes to verse 13. Then said Haggai, if one who is ceremonially unclean because he has come into contact with a dead body should touch any of these articles of food, should it be unclean? And the priests answer, it shall be unclean. Unholiness is infectious. Now, do you understand that? Have you ever gone to the fitness center and caught muscles? You see, that's something good something redeemable, muscles. Have you ever gone to the gym and caught muscles? I don't think so. Have you ever caught the ability to run further? No. Have you, you have to pursue the good stuff. You have to move and you have to dedicate yourself to pursue the good stuff. Have you ever been someplace where someone's sick, had the flu, and you caught it? Yes. That's because the bad stuff is viral. You can catch bad stuff. One negative friend will chase away 19 positive friends. One disloyal friend will disqualify you from access to 19 loyal people. One angry companion will chase away 19 peaceful friends. You got to choose your destiny with each relationship. The ultimate relationship in life is to receive Jesus as your savior, but you don't catch Jesus like a flu or try Jesus like some Coke product. Jesus is holy. You surrender all that you are to receive the King of Kings in your life. You make him Lord of your life. 
You submit to him. Popular thinking regarding relationships has set up many good people to fail. I I hear good people say things like, Jesus is a friend of sinners. Well, if you base your relationships on that type of thinking, you end up jeopardizing your family, your future, and your faith. Let's look at exactly what Jesus said in his answer to the Pharisees regarding that subject. Luke 7, verse 34, and here's Jesus talking, and he says this. Jesus says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and you say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus is saying, look at the lies they're telling about me. Jesus was, he was never a glutton, and yet he said, you say I'm a glutton. He was never a drunk, and he said, you say I'm a drunk. And if these aren't true, then was their statement about him being a friend of sinners true? Well, you tell me. Read it in context because a lot of people have written a lot of sermons, songs, and stories based off of what Pharisees were telling and trying to get us to say was true. Yes, glory to God, Jesus is the Savior of all sinners or else I wouldn't be here today. I'd be lost, stuck in a downward spiral on my way to hell. Well, who is Jesus a friend to? Well, let's look because he's a friend to somebody. Let's look who he's a friend to. John 15, verse 14, Jesus said this. He said, you are my friends if you do whatever I command you. You might want to read that over a couple of times with your friends and family. If hanging out with Jesus could make you a better person, what in the world happened to Judas, right? Holiness is not viral. Choosing life, you gotta choose life and you gotta choose the blessing. But holiness is not viral. Get the word of God in your heart. Yes, be friendly. Let your gentleness be made known to all. That's what Philippians says. But guard your heart. By this the world will know you're my disciples, Jesus said, if you love one another. That's John 13, verse 35. Sinners have to pursue Jesus. Leave the comfort of their status quo. Climb a tree. Leave their occupation. Go and sin no more. But they have to pursue Jesus, right? Remember, the prodigal son who came to the end of himself and then finally decided to pursue relationship with his father. You can read that in Luke 15 but he had to come to the end of himself. Listen to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Well, wait a sec. I thought it was, you know, um, good company would somehow fix the bad guy. Doesn't say that, does it? There was an old saying a long time ago that used to say, lie down with dogs, get up with fleas. <laughs> Jim Collins, the best-selling author and the business guru, he once said this in addressing business people, but it's so profound. He said, great vision without great people is irrelevant. Great vision without great people is irrelevant. Business people in the world, they know that you have to get the right people in the right seats on the bus for it to work, for it to be successful. You choose your destiny with each relationship. I've known business people who've lost everything tolerating one wrong business association. King Solomon, let's talk about him for a second. He was considered the wisest man in the world, but a bunch of ungodly wives, he had hundreds upon hundreds of wives, and they twisted his thinking and caused him great loss, great loss, great sin, great pain, and there's no record of him converting even one of his wives to God's way. Not one conversion to the truth. Wow. Why is that? because it's the law of relationship. Again, popular thinking is popular because it's common. It's destined for failure, but everybody's doing it. Kingdom relationships, on the other hand, are rare, uncommon, but desirable as gold. Look at 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17. So come out from among unbelievers, separate, sever yourselves from them, says the Lord, and touch not any unclean thing. Then I will receive you kindly and treat you with favor. Look at Proverbs 13, verse 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Success is the outcome of kingdom relationships 
and receiving. Choose your destiny when you choose who you will walk with and not walk with. Now, that doesn't mean you cut people off that make you uncomfortable or convict you because there's a little bit of that going on. Those are the strong relationships that you need. You need to be a little bit uncomfortable. Usually the relationships that are liabilities are the ones that agree with your bad attitudes and your carnal thinking and your, your selfishness. Don't pursue comfort. Pursue the comforter and he will help you choose strong relationships that pull you up, fill your tires up. And sometimes, oftentimes, that's uncomfortable, but it brings a peaceable outcome. Let me remind you again to review this segment of the series with some friends, some close friends, some close understanding friends who are wanting more of God's truth and his goodness. Help one another honestly look at where your relationships are projected to take you. Ask the hard questions. Think about this. A chain 1,000 lengths long is only as strong as its weakest link. I've heard people say, but, but, but bless his heart. Pastor Stephen, he's family. What can I do? Listen, Jesus came to save you from your genetics. He shed his blood to rewrite your identity. That means he came to save us from our genetics, from ourselves, from our thinking. James 4, verse 4, do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? There's only one bloodline by which we can be saved. The work of King Jesus on the cross, who shed his blood to set us free, giving us legal right to receive all the family benefits and promises. Choose your destiny with each relationship and start with Jesus right now. Pray this along with me. Heavenly Father, we need your help. Somewhere along the way, we thought we understood relationships better than we really did. The truth is we desperately need you. We need you to guide us, to help us in all of our choices. Show us where we've made wrong choices and believed wrong things, Master. Help us now to follow your truth for all of our relationships. We choose you, Lord. We choose to love the Lord. We choose your way and your will and your way of thinking. All in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.